And she said, I'm pretty sure you walked in at two. I went, holy crap! Yeah, what is this? Mom, you here? I can't, you're not a victim anymore! I can talk, I'm just pretending I can't, because I usually talk over the intro, and you can't hear it. Yeah. But it's too late, I already did it again. Ah, Captain Lady, sing the song, doodle, doodle. I meant to sing John Jacob Jingleheimer Sch Schmidt, well, Schmidt, Schmidt. Hey, I meant to sing one of the songs, but his name is not my name too. Because my name is Tristan Sartoris, but I do like shouting when I go out, and this is Full Circus. I'm happy to be here with you guys again today. Um, oh, wow, these freaking chair, which does not roll forward. The wheels don't work. The wheel, Another song, the wheels on the chair. They don't work well. They don't work well. They don't work well. Guys, I'm full of energy, and I know I shouldn't be because this... This is the lull. This is the lull of life. There is no greater dead week in yeah, the entirety of space and time than the week after Christmas. The 25th to the 1st, the New Year. It's just, what do we do? How are we bigger? Who am I? Um, you know, mental tumbleweeds just going by. So I know there's a little bit of a post-Christmas depression going down. Maybe post-Hanukkah depression. Post Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, I know you're depressed and that's okay because we're going to get through it together and just kind of enjoy this, this little pocket of time we have. But I think it doesn't need to be a lull. It doesn't need to be such a downtime. I mean, it is downtime, but I think it's, it's more a week of reflection. This is where we look back on, on all that we have done or, or haven't done and, and decide what our resolutions are going to be. That's really, it's just a building. You just got to get back into it. So don't be too sad, but it is hard. You know, because Christmas and the holidays are such a wrap up, you know, like you're like, oh, music, friends, family, games, festivities, candy, woo! And it just stops. It's like a great movie. Like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And it just stops. Now, most movies don't work like that. But if you've ever been like not doing your homework or your chores and then your mom catches you watching TV or movies, you're like, what are you freaking doing? Click off. And that's how it feels, man. You're like, oh, back to the real world. And you know what? That's kind of where we're at, all of us, emotionally and mentally. We're all kind of getting back to the real world, but we're, like, neglecting it because we feel something else coming on the horizon. I feel like I might secretly turn the TV back on. But for right now, we're, we're going to pretend to do some work. That's all this week is, is pretending to be productive when we all know we aren't. So... I hope you guys' holidays were well. Feel free to comment or text or send anything to me about how they were, because I'm going to tell you all about how mine went. As you can see, I am, I'm no longer in the elf onesie, as comfortable and as form-fitting as it was. Uh, it was a lot of money, and I it doesn't, you know, go with anything in my closet. That's what I told the lady when I returned. I was like, I'm sorry, you know, it just doesn't, you know, I need the money back. It doesn't go with anything. Which is a lie, technically, because I have a lot of stuff that would go with that. But you know what? You got to do what you got to do to get the money back. Um, also, I know a lot of you guys is the Wedgie Brigade because you guys love, you love, you love the Wedgies. Um, a side note, onesie is perfect for that. Okay, There's no, someone lifts up your shirt and tries to get you. There's it's loose fabric. They'll be trying to pull your shirt off, trying to get the zip. Where's the top of this thing? There ain't no top. It's a complete encapsulated form of butt cheek protection and there ain't no way you can get to me, buster. Um, so I returned it and I guess I'm now vulnerable, but also another thing you guys, as the, you guys are big fans of wedgies. Okay. We know this, but these wheels still don't work. Um, I don't get wedgies ever. Okay. I want to make that very clear. Cause a lot of you, like, <laughs> when's the last time you got wedgies? What's the deal with the wedgies? How often? I, I, I've never, I don't, I've never been wedgied. Like, someone's never taken my pants for a ride non-consensually, okay? Now, I was homeschooled, we grew up, we didn't, you know, be in the school system, we see bullying on TV and on those movies that my mom kept turning off, and we're like, oh, we gotta bully each other, that's a great idea, make our own fun, and, you know, we, we tormented and, 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 you know, belittled and, and broke each other a lot, but at, not in my grown adult life, so a lot of people, you know, you ask and, and you worry, don't, okay, I'm gonna be alright. Um, but if you are out there, if you are being wedged, get yourself a onesie. They're expensive, but highly worth it. The natural wedgie, though, there's there's only so many remedies, and I've I've gone on and on about those, and you can you can find those resources throughout the multitude of episodes of me talking about how to avoid butt cheek damage. Thus, moving forward, we are on to 
the Christmas season itself. So <laughs> uh, Christmas was great. Lots of gifts, lots of fun. It's not about materialism, but yeah, the gifts were awesome. Okay. They were cool. Uh, I think the greatest gift probably goes to my father, to my mother. Um, I wasn't changing my answer. I was saying my father, to my mother. It's a little parallel. So yeah, my mom was very bummed out about our, our Christmas tree because she was gone for like the first two and a half weeks of December for all the sickness and, and whatever. And she comes back and the tree's kind of dead. And that may or may not be our fault. Probably the latter. It was, it was, it was definitely our fault. And the tree was just sad. You had the tree had pre-Christmas depression. I don't want to do this anymore. And it's just droopy. And, and my mom didn't really complain, but my dad could see the look in her eyes and no one buys a second Christmas tree. Okay. That's not what you do. But my dad did. He bought a second Christmas tree and we had to sneak it up when my mom was out of the house. He lied, um, kind of like I did when I was trying to get the money back and all that. But he lied to my mom. He's like, the car's broke down. We got to fix it. And, and, you know, made a whole show of it while my brother and I zoomed home and tried to take apart a Christmas tree and put it back together like the Grinch, dude. To grab the tree and he started to shop. Like, steal. I put all, 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 you know, have you ever tried to redecorate, undecorate, then redecorate a new Christmas tree? That's a whole family affair. And you've got like 25, 30 minutes to do it all. We broke some ornaments, let me tell you that. So it was pretty tricky, but when she walked in, she bawled and cried and cried and cried and... That was the that was the best thing. And I know that for a fact because she said this is the greatest thing. <laughs> so I didn't really have to guess on that one. Um, but yeah, Christmas was great. There were some Christmas things I didn't bring up. I guess that maybe they weren't too exciting. We went to a little village and it was cold. It was wet. I wore white shoes and a bunch of dogs stepped on those shoes, creating brown shoes. Um, I saw a guy in a Grinch outfit. I don't know if he was part of the town. I think he was just trying to stay warm because he also like the he had a little um sleigh right and someone dressed up as Cindy Lou Who I think they were just having fun and wherever they parked with their sleigh car the police came and, and ticketed them and, and towed them but it, when he was there before they got there I was like oh the Grinch I gotta get a photo with you and I think he was just some guy but the photo came out well um we did a Christmas gingerbread off okay a gingerbread competition building the house this was my first time building a gingerbread house in its entirety on my own and you know i'm a homeowner now okay gingerbread but it still counts and i didn't win okay i'll tell you this one i'm a spoiler alert i didn't win i tried my hardest i talked smack and i'm just kind of like the undecorating redecorating with the tree i'm not great at decorating i'm not great at indoor decorating i'm not great at outdoor decorating okay I didn't know what to do with all this, all the ingredients and stuff. I've made lots of them, but like I, it's a family affair. I've never done it all on my own. And I thought I was going to wipe the floor with the competition. Okay. I thought it was going to be like in the movies with the barber. He goes, hair is flying. You know, and he turns the woman around, holds up the mirror. And she goes, oh, I'm gorgeous. I thought I was going to be, oh, ice and pipe. I have it all over my hands, smeared on the shingles. I'm throwing Smarties and Skittles and Tic Tacs. And I spin it around. Hey, 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 it's gorgeous. No, it's it's not. Oh, no, okay. This is not a gingerbread home. It was a foreclosure, okay? And it is, it's falling apart. Literally, it fell apart. I didn't even build it right. It fell apart and threw it in the trash can. So, needless to say, I did not win that battle. Um, and other than that, my brother got engaged. This is a congratulations to Joey and Bree. Uh, and it's much to the surprise of everybody but me. Okay. Kid you not. And you might not believe it now because I, I brag all the time, but for this one, I'm being completely serious and honest for the most part. <laughs> Christmas morning. I said, Hey, what are the odds that Joey proposes today? Kept it very hush hush, but I was like, yeah, what are the odds? Cause I have a feeling, you know, I'm very instinctual like this. And it was like, what? Come on, Kristen, get that freak out of here. Hey, later that day, what's he do? Pop the question. I go, oh, I don't always bet, but when I do, I try to be right. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who bets and doesn't try to, please, God, make me fail this. I don't want seven cents. I just lose some money. I don't think anyone's ever done that. You would think so, because I think the people who have gambling addictions, they... You know, there's no really rhyme or reason. You really have to be praying to lose money. Um, but anyways, yeah, so congratulations again to the fiancés, okay? She will officially be a sister-in-law. I'll have two sisters-in-law, not sisters. I wish I could get to the sister level, but it's just, 
it's hard, okay? Because the whole sibling title, it comes, especially growing up with that whole, the bull in the torment. Like, we grew up in the fires together. And uh, and my mom's very protective of <laughs> of the sisters-in-law, the, the women in the family. She's like, you can't talk about them. You can't say that. So I'm like, okay, no. And so I'm trying to work on that. It's hard to get to the... The, the level of, of sibling rivalry that is, you know, bitterness and ugly friendship. So we're trying, we're trying. Although she kind of started something, okay? We were at Christmas and we were about to take this photo and I had just eaten so much, okay? And I was like, man, I walk in here like a 10 and I'm going to be leaving like a 2. And she said, I'm pretty sure you walked in at 2. And I went, holy crap! And you... What is, mom? You here? I can't. You're not a victim anymore. Um, but I didn't. I didn't light him up or say anything because I'm still trying to figure out how to do that with finesse. You got to figure out to where it's not too brutal. You got to tread carefully. Let them lead where the you know oblivion comes from. So I don't really want to say any mean comebacks. I will say this though. Okay, speaking of Christmas trees, my mom got two of them. These people. Okay, my sister. Okay, not a sister-in-law because I'm about to make fun of her. My sister took down her decorations before Christmas even came. What is that bananas? Okay, and I told her, I was like, that's like getting ready for your wedding for a year and a half. Because she was like, I, I'm just sick of it. I've had so much time of it before. I was like, that's like getting ready for your wedding, parading around your wedding dress for weeks before the wedding, and then coming out in a jeans and flannel saying, I've already done it. This is the show, you know? It's like you rehearse for a big premiere of a new musical and like, we're, we're going to come out and do it and you don't perform. You don't actually show up and bring your A game because you've already kind of done it. And nay, that's not fair. That's not right. So, hey, exposed. Okay. And I see it. I see the posts online. She's part of the whole Christmas group. Like my mom, greatest, biggest Christmas fan there is. And, you know, my sister, she's posting. She's like, oh, yeah, we like to put the Christmas decorations up early because we don't actually get tired of them. Oh, do we? now so christmas folks this is my revenge all right i'm gonna expose the fact that there was a wolf in the hen's house she is not one of us okay attention people who like the holidays christmas next day up all right so there now we are officially siblings so congratulations um and that was a good fun time dude uh, what else we do for Christmas? Uh, we went to the Christmas Eve service. The church thing was great. There was a moment where I almost, okay, and almost, I'm saying loosely, but it was, it's almost strongly. I almost stole some money from the church. Let me explain, okay? So they had this competition for Amazon cards or something, and you scanned a little QR code, and they asked a bunch of Christmas questions. Now, for whatever reason, in my head, I didn't think that this was a competition. I thought, we were, oh, we're just going to answer and it's going to pick a poll of whoever entered. So I was Googling the answers while they're doing it. In church, I'm, I'm cheating. I'm cheating in church. This should not be allowed, okay? I was surprised. So he, so he started getting a little bit warm. I was like, okay, I get the idea. Put the phone down. And, um, and I would have won the freaking thing, but I, I closed it out because they had all the answers in the poll and the results on the top of the screen. I, was, I got too scared. I thought, oh, crap. My name's going to show up at the top there. And then if I win a card, I just, I stole money from the church. Now, sure, I would tie 10% back, but, you know, that's that's not really fair to do. So I, I narrowly avoided hell, basically. But we came out on top. Things work out for you, boy. Um, so, yeah, that was close. I just thought it wouldn't be fair. The saint that I am, I stopped myself from cheating at a church game where they usually give a card to the children. But I, I wanted it. I won't say I didn't. But, you know, what? That's, that's just that's something I got to work on. Okay, this new coming year, that's something I'm trying to put forward and reflect on. My ability to just, you know, take advantage of the situation and steal from others. Um, but, yeah, it was great. It was a great service. And, you know, my freaking, my church is cool. My pastor's cool. Dude, you think your pastor's cool? My pastor rides a motorcycle and has a mullet, dude. Okay? He's got a beautiful freaking spiritual mullet. Like the air just so elegantly flows it back with the powers of Jesus Christ. It's amazing, okay? It's like 
a holy Joe Dirt. It's like Joe Dirt if he took a shower and like just picked up a couple of scriptures. Like, ah, in the beginning was the word. <laughs> and uh, and that's my pastor, man. He's a cool guy. It's cool. All right. That's a biker look kind of. It's just, it's so, it's tight. It's cool. And I'm glad that I didn't steal money from them because then I would have had to look that mullet in the eye. All right. I would have had to look the party in the back and say, the party's over. But I didn't do that because I'm such a saint. I stopped myself. Um, and that was pretty much the entire holiday season. You know, there was a, there was some stealing. There was some lying. There was some some belittlement that just went on mostly now. And and lots of love and festivities. So I hope you guys had a beautiful one as well. Again, tell me how it all went and, and we'll have fun thus forward. Um, right now, I'm trying to do a little bit of dog sitting. I'm doing it for my aunt. And let me tell you. My aunt is just knocking out the park right now, okay? She had all these snacks, and then I get there, and she has a gift card, and then and then she doesn't even want me to stay over there. She's like, just come for a few hours. It's fine. I'm like, what? There's just so many pieces of the puzzle going on at the same time, and then she gives me the money ahead of time. It's such a sweet little paradise. Um, so I was very thankful for that, and I don't know why, uh, I don't know why all that happened. I think I'm very skeptical. I'm assuming that, uh, word got out. I told my mom, I was like, I think I just spent too much on, on Christmas, you know, I'm kind of out of money right now. I freaking, it, it went all out. I was buying gifts left and right for the people, because I'm a very generous mofo, and that's why I thought about stealing from the church, but I didn't. <laughs> I was just kidding. Um, I mean, I did almost think about it, but not because of that. And... So anyways, I think the word might have got out like that. And I only say that because I, I told her this. And then the very next day, my dad's like, hey, what's the deal? You know, you don't have a lot of money. I'm like, oh, didn't realize that one. Should have picked up on it. And then uh, and then the next day, my aunt gave me money ahead of time. So I'm thinking that might have been a little spreading of the, the good word that, you know, I got to collect some some more change. This is why it's a lull at the end of the Christmas season, because usually people spend all their money on the holidays. Like, I don't have anything to do this week. I can't afford to go out to eat. Um, so I got to work on that. But, you know, I'm saying it on the podcast right now, I got to get ahead of it before my mom just spreads it <laughs> across the world. Um, I'm just joking. I did tell my mom I was going to make fun of her for that. Um, beforehand. I always tell my family before I make fun of them. Not really. Most of them are surprised. But in this specific instance, I did. I did tell my mom that I would do that. But uh, dog sitting for my aunt is fantastic. It's beautiful. It's been a great time. Um, What hasn't been a great time, dude, and it's not really that big of a deal, but I'm trying to tee it up with a little bit of a dramatic effect. There's been a lot of negative comments out of nowhere, okay? I posted some clips of the Christmas episode, and for some reason, you know, there's just things being said left and right. Here, I got a couple right here. Someone said, not funny, okay? And I did a bit about how I like to try and make people smile, and then people kept following. Dude, you're not funny. You're not clever. You never make me smile. And one guy's like, hey, get a haircut. He doesn't even watch anything. He watched one clip, and that was his only comment. He's like, you got to get a haircut. And um, and I don't know what's going on, man. There seems to be some haterade, okay, being sipped, full of electro spites. I don't know where the negativity is coming from. And I even shared this with, uh, with some of the family members. And, oh, here's why. I, sh I shared it with my aunt because on Christmas, right, I just talked to my my uncle and he was talking about people who have negative things to say and try and bring people down. It's usually a good sign that you're making progress and it was a very good conversation. So I sent it to them. Like, isn't this ironic? We just talked about it and then someone came back. And um, and my aunt was very, uh, very passionate on my behalf. But my uncle sent uh, a thing. This was a kind of a funny text message. So he sent like a lecture. Okay full of inspirational and very motivational quotes and exactly how to go about it. He's like, hey, don't worry, keep it up, be proud, and we're all this, all this, you know, good stuff. Um, and I don't mind that. I love that, okay? But I'm always wary of, like, texting big things and, like, deep conversation with somebody because I don't know where the etiquette is and how to respond. So he's like, okay, allow me to just kind of go on this little tangent and explain. And he gets very passionate about it. I'm very grateful. I'm like, okay, you know what? I got to respond with the same amount of passion because he can't, he just put in all this effort. I can't just say, okay, thanks. Uncle Tom, that's it. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I got to respond with the same amount of enthusiasm and power and investment that he had just bestowed upon me. So I type back another long message. 
because I don't want to feel like the odd man out because I never know where the line is with these kind of texting chains. And then I'm like, uh, man, I hope I don't go too long here. And then he responds <laughs> with just a, a little gif. and like, oh, now, okay, I got worried about making it awkward. Totally did. And then here we are. Um, so if you are in a texting chain, okay, and if someone's trying to engage in a big conversation, figure out where the line is. And I'm totally fine to have a deep, meaningful, and fun conversation. I was, I loved it. I was more than willing. But uh, I never want to talk on for too long. And I love it when other people do talk on too long. I just, I don't know when to engage because I might accidentally talk on too long. Um, but anyways, yeah, he was just trying to say, keep your head up because, you know, people are going to, people are going to people. And it doesn't really bother me. That's what I was trying to tell him is that I don't, I don't really get like beat down by just random negative comments and and you know, I even told it to my brother. I was like, yeah, it's just not really that big of a deal. He's like, well, you sound pretty riled up. You sound like they're getting under your feathers. Like, that's not true at all. Now, here I am making a bit about it on the podcast. So maybe they won. <laughs> but uh, it wasn't, it really isn't that big of a deal. I, I am tempted, okay, again, as a little brother, I have this kind of instinct to nudge and poke and pull and pry and have some fun with somebody especially when they start it kind of like my sister my new sister not even in law now okay she's full sibling open season when somebody starts it i'm like oh we get to play now but i know they're genuinely being spiteful they're genuinely trying to be negative and and in that case you know i in my my meditative state, okay, because I meditate, right? You know, I, I sit down and I put on the the beautiful poems. Well, not poems. I put on music. Well, not, not music. And I kind of just like sing along. I mean, but the, I don't know the lyrics, so I just hum. Okay, I'm just making noises. But I meditate the way that I do. That brings me peace. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'm i not bothered by it, but I, I do have the instinct. And I have to like kind of pull back because you have to have empathy, for something like that. I mean, if you think about like the best time of the season, this is, this is before post Christmas, again, the pre, like they, these people were feeling like our dead Christmas tree. The fact that you see something where one, I didn't even say anything weird in the, in the clips at all. Although I think the one that got the most like kind of um feedback was I was doing the Elvis. Oh, oh, oh and maybe there's just Elvis fans and they were riled up, but uh, yeah, there was like to feel that man, to feel that, you see somebody else just having fun. And you're like, I not only can't even just scroll by, I got to say something mean. It's not constructive. I just, I got to tell them I don't like you. And then they keep on, like they watched multiple of them and keep commenting. I still don't like you. I'm like, all right. Are you okay? So I just, I have tried to have more empathy. And, you know, you imagine like that's, that's a hundred percent chocolate cacao right there. That's just all bitterness. And, you know, Christmas is a tough time, dude. As someone who just freaking used all their money on presents. I get it. I know. Okay. The whole world, life is hard, okay? That's why we celebrate New Year's in the first place. Like, yeah, congratulations. We survived. That's it. That's what New Year's is. So, you know, you got to be careful. I, I try not to add more fuel and especially belittle somebody when you, you see them having a hard time. But it's just, it's, it's a layup. And especially if you click on their profile, you're like, there's a lot of material here to use. But you got to, you got to be calm, okay? It's the little brother in me that I'm like, I just want to have fun, but... You know, if somebody's being genuine, then you just got to I just wished him happy, happy Christmas and, and Merry New Year. Um, and and hopefully we're great. But I don't want to share any of the names or put any of that stuff up because I know the Wedgie Brigade, you guys probably will go after them. And I don't I don't want to spread more hate and more destruction and more, you know, don't comment wedgies and don't try and beat them up because then they go. I don't actually want to tear somebody down. OK. And you don't want to tear somebody a new one or tearing off the underwear. But I'm trying to spread more love. That's more of my resolutions, okay? I'm trying to bring more peace, more love, okay? More joy into the world, even when they try and take it from me. But nevertheless, um, I don't know why that's happening. I don't know where it comes from, but I guess it might be a good thing. We'll see. Again, it doesn't really bother me. How many minutes did I just spend talking about it? Who knows, right? Um, so now, guys... Let's go on to the New Year's resolutions. And I'm trying to be a little bit quick here because we're about 20 plus minutes into the show and the Browns game is about to be on. Um, so New Year's is coming up. OK, and I've often talked about New Year's resolutions and you guys know I don't like New Year's resolutions, but it's not because I don't like the resolutions. It's because I don't like people waiting to start something. You know, because you, 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 you wait and then there's never going to be a good time to have a good time. Now you could theorize that's going to be a good time to have New Year's, but my birthday is on the second day of the year. So it's like immediately I'm starting off handicapped. 
I can't make it through double days and I got to start on the third. That doesn't make any sense. So it's less about the resolutions and more about waiting to get started. Like right now. Okay, I'm not going to attack people who attack me. I've already started my, my path of empathy and love and peace. But if I wanted to wait until New Year's, then I'd be freaking going ham on everybody having fun. You know? Don't And, and you could. You know, you could just take this whole lull and just be like, okay, my New Year's resolution is junk, so I'm just going to eat a ton of junk right now. No more when I get there, okay? I'm going to be nice during the New Year, so for right now, I'm going to take them all out, okay? I'm going to be focusing on my goals in the future, but for right now, I'm going to be watching some Netflix. Like... You know, just get started now. But I do love the idea of goals. That's a great part, man. But so what was I saying? Yeah, resolutions. I don't like actual and just setting them into this one specific thing. Goals are great, dude. And talking about resolutions, I took L's across the board. And this is why I don't even want to brand them as, as resolutions because they're like they're, they're the goals. I'm, just, I'm still chasing them. It's not just through 2023, but. You you put one thing and you you put it like in a box. You put parentheses on it, like yeah, in this year, this is what I'm gonna do. And then you just forget about it. You write it off. You scratch it. But I didn't do any of mine. I mean, so let's look back at my my 2023 resolutions. They were to one, read the Bible every day. I did not do that, man. Um, I probably wouldn't have almost stolen from church if I did. Working on it. Um, so the next one was to run a marathon. That did not happen. Uh, so yeah, gotta, gotta get on that. And I wanted to start stand up comedy. Didn't do that either. Okay. So we went over three right there. I did, however, read 12 books. I was very proud of myself for that. Now I, they were audiobooks mostly. So I listened to other people do the work. I don't know if that counts. It's kind of like, you know, so you're building a house and, and you just kind of watch, like I'm there, but I'm not really doing it. And you're kind of paying attention, but I can't recall any of it. So kind of maybe over four, maybe, you know, but I'm not worried about it. OK, I had fun with the time that I did and I don't want to make any excuses, but here's a couple of mine. <laughs> um, You know, I lost my Bible at the beginning of the year. I forgot, misplaced it. Now is it on my phone? Sure. But, you know, not all excuses are phenomenal. I did start running. And I mean, kind of the marathon was in May and I waited until like March or April to get started. I was like, oh, crap, I got to cram in a lot of progress that people spend like six to eight months practicing for. I'm going to cram all of this into a tight little zone. So I I ran like my first mile ever. I think that I can remember like doing a full straight mile. I did one and I ran it under nine minutes. I was very proud of myself. And then like the following couple of days, I was like, well, I got to start getting up quick because we got to do 26.2 miles. I jumped, did a 5k. And then the next day I did a 10k. And this is a lot of running for somebody who's never ran. My knees started hurting. I felt fat. I felt embarrassed and I just stopped altogether. And then the marathon came and it went. So I missed on that. And then the stand up, I just, I never got around to it. I was so focused on different things and we did a lot of cool stuff okay just because you fail your resolutions again that's part of i don't want to like it because you don't look at it like a failure because i'm still trying to do these things later don't encapsulate to one little spot but um yeah i was so focused on you know all the commercials that we did and the voice act and the games and and a lot of cool projects that we did that i forgot about it until like just these past couple months where i started getting back into the comedy club trying to get a film scoping it out when do i give the guy a fist bump when do i hand the mic i just don't want to tear up the scene so that is something I'm still trying to do. I'm still trying to read my Bible every day. Um, I still want to run a marathon. And that will go into our, our new New Year resolutions. Okay. And they're not really resolutions. But you know what I'm talking about. Okay. They're goals. Okay. And this is advice to everybody who wants to set resolutions. Set your goals and start them freaking now. Now, I'm not a psychologist. Okay. Now, I did take psychology. <laughs> or I took one class. Okay. But I read the textbook. Well, I didn't, I didn't read it. It was another audiobook. But I, you know, okay, well, I only did, like, the sample of it. And I played it on two times speed. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm more of a get the gist guy, okay? It's always a, it's always a but, but, but. But you know what? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. In my psychological mind that may or may not have completed the course, probably not, definitely didn't, don't lie. Um, yeah, I, I would say, dude. Set freaking goals and set lofty ones too. A lot of people, I guess it depends on what kind of person you are. Some people, the idea of setting a big goal and knowing they're not going to reach it makes them feel like they can't even strive for it. Other people like little brick by brick by brick by brick by brick and you climb because you need an achievable thing to, to go after. 
Um, but I think for a lot of people, and myself included, I need like overwhelmingly large goals, things that I'm probably not going to achieve. But even if you don't, striving for something that far away makes you kind of, you know, you push harder because you have so many, it's like climbing a ladder. You're like, okay, I only have so much time to climb. You're going to climb way faster if it's like, oh, I need to climb these three steps. There's just a lot to, to take care of. And I'm being motivational and inspiring right now. But you know what? Take that, psychology. I don't need you. I figured it out because I did take it in college. For real, though, guys. I didn't finish it. I really started it. But listen, as someone who barely took psychology, I recommend setting something huge and lofty and out of reach and just striving for freaking greatness, man. Sick parvis magna, okay? Latin for greatness from small beginnings. I'm all over the place, but you know what? I'm trying to read my Bible more and really get after it, so... I haven't started, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to try. Okay. But the Browns are on. I don't have a ton of time to do that. Um, so anyways, guys, I'm just saying the new year's coming, love people, strive for your goals. And we have a lot of cool ones to get to. I'm, I'm going to be trying to read my Bible still. Okay. I'm trying to get after it. I'm trying to, I'm gonna start and I'm going to do stand up. And I, I don't know if I'm going to run a marathon, but I know that I'm going to be, I'm running a half marathon. I'm doing an obstacle race. Um, speaking of my aunt and uncle, uh, there's this whole friggin as a 14 miles or something like that. I can't remember, but it's challenging. And I was like, I just want an overwhelming challenge. Cause that's what I'm interested in. I like things that are so unfeasible. Okay. Is that the right word? Check your check. I like things that when I hear them, I go to myself. I look myself in the mirror and I say, Tristan, you can't do that. And I go, what? You're doubting us now? Me? Oh, you don't know what we're made of, silly boy. And I talk down to myself, too. So anybody who feels belittled, you know, by me, don't worry. Okay. He gets, he, by me in the mirror, he gets just as much and he's so motivated. I feed off that. Um, so anyways, yeah, I want to run that. That'll be excited. I will run that. And I'll say this, dude, in terms of like this, this channel and all this greatness, I want to start making more videos. I think I get so caught up in worrying about what I can do and how much time and all the other things I want to do. And I just, or perfectionism too. It's just like, I want to, I, I just like the idea of creating and just like making things. So I don't know what that is. And you worry about a brand and a business, but it, like the Trist, the Tristan Sartorsch channel is exactly what that is. It's, it doesn't have a niche. It's not just a podcast, it's not just whatever. I just want it to be me and whatever happens, happens. It's not the optimal way to run a social media page or a YouTube channel or whatever you you think it is um but it's the way i want to do it i don't want to take it too serious um and i know people have recommended like you gotta start put the podcast on a different channel there's a lot of comments i get and uh and just focus on the impressions or do whatever and like it's i just thank i mean i thank you again that's constructive criticism i appreciate those negative comments um but at the same time i don't want to take it too seriously because this isn't my job okay this is just for fun and that's why the hate comments thing don't even bother. It's just, we're having fun, guys. I talked about him again, guys. Dang it. Um, <laughs> but I just, I, I, that's my goal, okay? That is my resolution from now until the end of time is to just keep on having more fun and keep on being me, dude. Um, but in the meantime, before those start, guys, let's just all keep being awful to ourselves and the planet and enjoy, be like, you know, the age and the dawn of progress and productivity has not yet reached us. So during this law where you have nothing to do, just enjoy being a piece of crap. You know what I'm saying? All right. That's what we're trying to do here in this new year. Um, now, there are some more things I got to get to. But I don't know if we have time. Uh, next episode, we will be talking about... I got a question. We got a question. And it's about um, the best pranks that I think I'd ever received and also given. And that will be a fun question to deal with. But if you guys have any more questions, you can send those down below. Or I can just tell you it's fullcircuspodcast at gmail.com. And we will be answering, you know, let's have some more fun. Okay? If you have stupid, silly questions, again, dude, I kind of took psychology. Um, I, you know, I'll bestow upon you some insane wisdom. Okay? And by the insane, I don't mean like insanely great, just insane wisdom. I'm ridiculously profound, but ridiculous emphasis on ridiculous. So anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you guys are doing well this holiday season. Hope your holiday season has been great. But even going forward into this weird kind of off limit season, hope the season's still good. Love your loved ones. Make fun of the people closest to you. And, you know, just strive to have fun. Because if not you, then who? You know, like somebody's got to do it. If, you, if you're if you not having fun, then who, right? Go have some fun, guys. All right, I love you, and let's all pray that the Browns win, and I will see you 
next week on Full Circus. All right, see ya.